it's time to start up my coal boiler and this is where I live just south of Buffalo New York so we're going to need this boiler pretty soon I've had my EFM coal boiler now for 10 years and it's been a very good unit we'll start it up here the um, design of this unit is pretty ingenious the coal is fed from the bottom and it comes up through this pot here the way I get the thing started is to throw some wood chunks in there and uh, you can see the air blowing up through this, this pot here and I use my torch to get the uh, wood started. I've tried a few different ways to start the boiler and I found that this is really the easiest. Just throw a few blocks of wood in there and start them up with a torch. On the side of the unit you can adjust the airflow. Uh, there's an indicator right on the side of the blower there. So as things get going, I uh, can throw a little bit of coal in on top of that wood. And then over here on the side, we can adjust the coal feed rate. This is an auger fed coal boiler, and that shaft is what turns and turns the auger to bring the coal into the bottom of the, the burning chamber. And I noticed I had a couple loose bolts here. Time to get those things tightened up. The EFM company uh, invented a pretty ingenious system, and it's simple. I guess that's why it's such, such a great system. You count the number of teeth on that gear. The more teeth uh, you have turning, the more coal the auger brings in. Now over here is your coal feed uh, rate and air mix settings. And now uh, I've got it set on four teeth, and so you set this. Uh, air setting on the side here to four and that should be just about the right combustion for your coal. Fire's looking pretty good. And now we can increase our feed rate for the coal. You do it with that little thumb screw right there. And you can see I've got the gear turning faster now. I'll set it for about six teeth and then adjust my airflow to match. Looks like the boiler's about at 80 degrees and our goal is 180. But to get ready, I had to replace that stove pipe this year after 10 years of burning. And um, my domestic hot water coil developed some leaks in those unions right there. So I re-engineered things and put that in new. Also had to replace the boiler drain. This air purge, I uh, replace that unit every year. And uh, this year I had some leaks in my isolation valves so I, I replaced those on the main pump. I've got a small bathroom here out in the shop and uh, I installed a mixing valve on my domestic water for the sink so I'll adjust that temperature and there's the auger that runs off the side of the boiler and through the wall into the coal bin. Just a few more things you want to do here on the boiler and there's a few places you can oil things up get everything ready to go here for winter. Usually about once a week I, I put a drop of oil on these. And it's about time to check our fire. I was telling you about that uh, pot that the EFM company designed inside here in the, the burning chamber. And uh, the coal comes up through the bottom of that. And as it burns, when it reaches the top of the pot, it just falls over the side into the ash pan pretty slick. And once a year I uh, put a drop of oil in this hole right here and it lubricates the, the motor. I have a little trouble here with my, my oiler. But it, it just takes one drop, that's all you need in there. And I'll check things out. We're getting up there about 160 so at 180 the uh, boiler will, will shut, shut itself down. We'll put our cover on, and we'll check that uh, domestic hot water again. Looks like it's set for about 120 degrees. I can uh, turn that down. Ready for 2014. So it's September 6th, and right now things look like this out there. But it won't be long, and it'll look like this.